So as I'm recording this video as a follow-up to my original video regarding the Call Me Carson allegations, I noticed that my video was number 32 on trending for gaming on YouTube, which is mind-blowing. I've never been on YouTube trending, and this is just insane. But anyway, I'm here now because we got a lot more information regarding this situation, and we're gonna go over all of it piece by piece. So in the video I made yesterday, the biggest piece of criticism I had about this whole situation is that we just simply did not have enough evidence. We were simply going off the word of mouth of Noah and Travis, two former Lunch Club members who were Call Call Me Carson's friends. Nowhere in the video did I deny the possibility that Call Me Carson had a sexual relationship with an underage fan, but I did say that I would feel uncomfortable drawing any conclusion simply based on the fact that there was not enough concrete evidence of anything. And as this story unfolds, and as people come out with their side of the story, there's gonna be more and more evidence for both sides. But as of right now, it's like really not looking too good for Carson. But for those of you who are fans of Call Me Carson, I will say there is some good news. In terms of any like insane, crazy pedophile allegations, those are kind of, you know, been disproven. And that's, of course, at the time that I'm recording this. You know, in a week, he could get exposed for dating, like, a five-year-old. But as of right now, what it looks like happened is that Call Me Carson abused his position of power to have a sexual relationship and, you know, have sexual conversations with a 17-year-old girl. And I'm pretty sure this goes without saying, but in case you need to hear it, that is just, you know, not okay. Abusing your position of power to pressure and manipulate girls into having these sexual conversations with you, which they most likely would not otherwise be having if you weren't, you know, this massive YouTuber. And yeah, before look at these screenshots. I'm probably not going to make any money from this video because it won't get monetized. So if you guys can just drop a like and subscribe, it would help me out a lot. So this video that we're going to look at right here is a tweet from Sam on Twitter, who apparently was one of the girls who Carson had a connection with. And I have a clearer screenshot from this conversation, which says, I'm scared that I want to talk to you for the wrong reasons. Then she says, elaborate. Call me Carson then responds with, what if I only want to talk to you for the sexual part of it? I don't want that, but like, I'm worried about it. What if I subconsciously am only talking to you because it turns me on or something? And we have another video on Twitter, which honestly, this one looks really damning. This is a video from Joko on Twitter, who has major ties with Call me Carson. I'm not into kids, but I did trade nudes with people under the age of 18, which is very bad. I was 19. That's all you need right there. That's Carson's profile. There you go. There's all the stuff for that. And then if you go down to the very bottom, grooming pedophilia Carson situation, this tweet, he says, this shit is absolutely disgusting. I figure you guys will be seeing this sooner or later, but yeah, absolutely gross messages confirming that this is true. And we can see here that Carson says, but I did trade nudes with people under the age of 18, which is very bad. Isaac, who is in this Discord server with Carson says, there's always key details Kim will purposely leave out to make it look bad so it's easier for views. Carson says, of course. Isaac then says, was that when you were also under 18 or were you of age? Carson says, I was 19. So before we step any further, I just want to quickly go over the morality of what Carson is saying here. I don't know the Romeo and Juliet laws in all 50 states, you know, I'm not like very informed on that, but I will say morally and ethically, I think that most of us can agree a 19 year old talking to a 17 year old in a semi-sexual way really isn't that bad. I mean, you don't, I mean, that's not very abnormal. I mean, surface level, a two year age difference. I mean, in most cases that is like not even, people don't even notice that. The primary issue here is not really the two year age difference, although I'm not sure about the legality of that. The main issue and definitely the main concern that a lot of people have been having having is the power dynamic between the two of them. Because on one hand, you have a YouTuber who is like massively famous, plays with PewDiePie, had his own YouTube's action figure, and is loved by a lot of people like who watch YouTube. A lot of people like Call Me Carson. And on the other hand, you have a girl who pretty much nobody knew about before the situation came out, who to my knowledge was a fan of Call Me Carson herself. I'm going to guess that she wouldn't be talking to him if it wasn't for his size on YouTube and you know, his massive platform. And my guess is that Call Me Carson realized that was the the main reason she was speaking to him and the reason that she was okay with some of the conversations that they had. And I think at that point, it's Carson's responsibility to pretty much step down and realize what he's doing is not okay. Because if he doesn't self-evaluate at this point, you know, if he doesn't step back and realize, hey man, I'm kind of using my large platform in order to have these inappropriate conversations with people who I shouldn't be having them with. You know, if he doesn't have that conversation with himself, who's to say that he won't stop there, you know? Who's to say that 
they won't go for, you know, even younger girls, like 16, 15, you know, I mean, it's just a dangerous game you're playing. And I can say, like, pretty certainly that if it wasn't Call Me Carson who had this conversation with this girl, and if it was just, like, any random dude, I am, like, 95% sure that this girl would have blocked him, you know, like, easily, that's a quick block. But she didn't do that, obviously, because she's a big fan of Call Me Carson, and just like how she didn't block him, she probably was less likely to, you know, tell him to stop doing certain things that she was uncomfortable with. Like, if I'm a big fan of John Cena, and John Cena accidentally, like, like, punches me and knocks one of my teeth out, I'm probably not gonna be the happiest, you know, I might be a little bit angry due to the fact that one of my teeth has been knocked out, but I'm probably way less likely to press charges on John Cena than I am, you know, if just some random dude punched my tooth out. And again, this is all based on the simple fact that I am a fan of John Cena. So yeah, this whole thing is just a very large power imbalance that led to, you know, a relationship or a conversation and really just getting off the rails. So with that out of the way, and as more and more people who are, you know, somehow connected to Call Me Carson are going to give their perspective on the situation, we are going to hear more and more sides of the story, and one of these sides of the story that has just recently been released is a statement that was made by Slamsicle, another former member of the Lunch Club who was connected with Call Me Carson, and this is what he had to say. I was made aware of Carson's actions the day before it went public. When he was trending, I messaged him letting him know, and the first thing he told me was, long story short, I sexted a couple of girls and when they were 17 and I was 19. He said it so casually and immediately was downplayed as an incident that happened in the past and that was it. I was told this happened in his early growth as a content creator and he apologized to both girls and solved these issues privately. I know this wasn't true as it happened during SMP Live and he did nothing to formally deal with it at the time. When I first heard about it, I wanted to help my friend who I trusted already became a better person and dealt with these issues in the past. I told him it could be worse because of what he told me originally, but after learning new information, it is far worse than I could have imagined at the time. I deeply regret making any excuse for his actions. I was shocked and wanted to help someone I trusted but didn't realize hours later that I was betrayed and was told false information that was downplayed to not seem as extreme. Although this is still highly irresponsible of me the way I reacted at the beginning, I do not stand by Carson or his actions in any way. I'm still processing a lot of this and I don't know how to feel beyond this point. It feels like a lot of things are crashing down and burning and it's a terrible gut-wrenching feeling. I wanted to make this statement to formally clarify any comments posted of me and although I don't stand by those comments anymore, I respect why they were shown in the first place. I am sorry to the victims and I apologize for how I reacted originally. It was irresponsible of me and I let my trust get in the way of what I should have known immediately was a horrible thing to do. I hope we can move on from this eventually, but I know the impact that he has had on everyone in this community and it will be difficult. I love you all and stay safe. So I do think once Carson decides to come out with a formal statement, you know, actually explaining what happened, why he did what he did, and an apology, I do think that people will forgive him. I honestly do because I think that he knows what he's done wrong at this point and in every screenshot that we've seen, he acknowledges what he did is incredibly messed up. He obviously would not make the same mistake ever again. And with all that in mind, the actual thing that he's getting exposed for really isn't that bad when compared to a lot of the other things that YouTubers have done. Like, I obviously acknowledge the fact that there is a, you know, power imbalance between the two of them, but when we keep in mind the grand scheme of things, I do think that Carson will be alright, okay? This is not, like, some huge thing that he's done wrong, you know? I think in the grand scheme of things, this might be, like, a road bump in his career. You know, until new information comes out, I think that people who are calling him a P3-dophile as of right now, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a reach. But all things considered, I don't think Carson is as guilty as a lot of people people want to believe, but I also don't think that he's completely innocent. Take everything with a grain of salt and pay attention to when new information comes out, you know, like don't make any conclusions. Or at least don't make any like hard conclusions until we have all the information. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.